Uh, joining us here at Post 9 today, Wells Fargo Securities Head of Equity Strategy, Chris Harvey's with us, and J.P. Morgan Chief U.S. Economist, uh, Mike Faroli. Guys, really appreciate you coming on on an important day. It's good to see you both. Good to see you. I too. thought of you last week, Chris, because of your note about the rotation, yep. which you have some doubts about, mostly because of the earnings, right? That, that's right. I, I think... We're not against the rotation. We're just waiting for it. I think a lot of people and a lot of investors are just not sure about the E. And until we start to see situations where a Nike, a Delta, a Walgreens doesn't go down on bad news, we won't, we're not convinced of the rotation, right? We want people to believe that numbers are going to be higher, that things are going to get better. But bad news right now is bad news. And that, for us, means that the rotation is probably not sustainable. But the rate part, you think, is coming. The rate part is coming, right? The Fed is out there saying, hey, we're going to cut rates. They've never telegraphed it this aggressively before. We also think the economy is not as strong as people think. And so rates are coming down. I think we've basically top-ticked it on rates. But really, it's about the E at this point in time. Mike, meantime, uh, I think you did move to September. Can you talk about... Uh, your calculus behind that. And, and I wonder, too, well, how you think Powell will respond today as he has his first chance to talk about CPI? Yeah, so we did move to September on that CPI report. We're now looking for a quarterly, we're continuing to look for quarterly cuts thereafter. I think the calculus is pretty sim simple, which is, you know, if you look back over the past year, uh, inflation is down quite considerably and unemployment rate is up uh, seven tenths from its low. Uh, and Fed officials have been making you know, considerable note of that move in the unemployment rate. Uh, and I do think you know, we're going to hear from Powell at, at uh, 2.30 today. I suspect he will describe that latest um, uh, CPI report as more good news. And the last time he spoke, he, he was already seeing uh, the May report as, as good news. And I think he'll see, see that continued. And that, then I think the question really is, you know, if you think July is too early, which we and most people do, then what will be the tempo of, uh, of rate cuts after they start in September? As we said, we're at a quarterly pace, but uh, you know, if the labor market continues to deteriorate, I think they could potentially go faster than that. I was just talking about some of the implications from a Donald Trump presidency and potential Republican sweep. Mike, do you see it as positive for growth with risk to inflation? So I, I think there's a lot of uh, unknowns right now. I think uh, certainly on, on growth, if we have a red sweep, uh, I think it's likely we're going to have more uh, tax cuts, uh, more of the, the, the 2017 tax cut extended uh, after its current expiration in late 25. So that certainly would be a relative benefit for growth, uh, albeit with higher deficits. And then I think the big wild card, and I think you alluded to this earlier, Sarah, is that on, uh, on, on trade and immigration policy, there are really a lot of unknowns. And, uh, you know, if you go back to 2019, the first, uh, you know, trade war uh, did have a chilling effect on business sentiment. And again, perhaps some of that effect can be offset by, um, uh, by deregulation. But I think we're really entering an environment of pervasive uncertainty when we look at policy next year. Do you agree with the, the urge to sell bonds when his odds go up? Well, I certainly think, uh, you know, the deficit is not on a good trajectory, even under current policy. Uh, and if we extend all the tax cuts, which would probably happen under almost any scenario, but perhaps a little bit more under a red wave, uh, you know, you're looking at a pretty harrowing uh, situation for issuance. So I do think, uh, you know, that sentiment certainly has some backing to it.